Now let's take a look at moments and center of mass. So start with the definition. The moment of a point mass of mass m about the point p which is going to be defined as the mass times the distance. So x is going to be distance from wherever our point mass is to the point p where we're measuring the moment. All right, physical interpretation of this. First one is, think about how you open a door. Well, if I'm pushing a door open, it's much easier if I push on the outside of the door than if I push near the hinges. What we're measuring here is you have a larger moment when you push further away than when you're closer to where the door turns. So moment is measuring something about distance and something about force. And in this case, I'm not going to talk about force. I'm just going to talk about mass. OK? Another way to think of this, which will be more useful for doing computations, is just seesaw physics. You have, say, a fulcrum. You have your plank on it. And then you want to know, how do I get things to balance, or how do I decide which way that seesaw is going to turn? That's all, all a problem about moments. Now, so instead of a single point, let's move to a system of points. Say, position at x1, mass is m1, and then we go through up through position xk, mass mk. For the system, the way we go about getting a moment for the entire system at once is just to add up the moments for each point mass that is in the system. So that's just saying each of these points will have moment, say, OK, definition, m1, x1, all the way up through mk, xk, and then we just add them together. So that's what I'm going to call the moment of the system about the origin, m0. Now the thing to note is that when I talk about distance here, we're also going to have, if x1 happens to be a negative number on the left of the origin, it's still going to keep its minus sign. So when we talk about distance, we're talking about sine distance. Let's look at some examples. My first case, this is one we should all believe in. I have a seesaw. The seats are equal distance apart, say 10 meters each from the origin. And then we put two kids on, each that weighs 50 kilograms. Even in the presence of gravity, we expect this thing to balance, or at least to hover. It's not going to definitely tend to one side or the other. Let's see what happens when we compute the moment. OK, we'll have 50 times minus 10, since we're on this side of the origin, plus 50 times 10, and I get a 0 coming out. So we know the system's balanced, and that's what it means when we get a moment equal to 0. That means that if I put equal force coming down on both, this time it's gravity, then there's going to be no reaction from the system. It's not going to want to tend to one side more favorably over the other. Go to case two. So what I'm going to do now is, well, we'll leave the kid on the right where he is, but now we're going to move in by a half to the minus five meter position, and I'm going to put two kids in that spot. Let's see what happens. OK, well, now we've got a mass of 100 kilograms times minus 5 meters. And we're going to add that to the 50 times 100 from before. We notice we get a 0 out, and this system's balanced. So this, again, is going to agree with what we kind of know from real life, that if I want to mess around with the weights on each of these, we're going to have to either move someone in with a greater weight or move them out with a lesser weight. Let's flip the problem on its head. So I'm given a system of point masses. How do I figure out the balancing point? Answer to that's going to be the center of mass. So definition of center of mass, I have my system of points. And I take the sum of all the masses. We're going to call that the total mass. Then I'm going to take my moment about the origin. Remember, that's just the sum of all the moments. And then we divide by the total mass. We have three interpretations of this. The one we're using to motivate the problem is the center of mass is going to be the balancing point. If I think of all our points in the line is connected with a wire, this is where I would lift it up at so that when it's lifted up off the line, gravity acts down on it, the thing will still hover under the force of gravity. For my second interpretation, the one used by physicists, think of it this way. 
Suppose I have a solar system traveling through a galaxy. Well, you might worry this solar system's complex. It's got a sun, it's got planets. For its movement through the galaxy, do I really need to know how each individual piece moves? The answer is no. What a physicist would do is take the system, collapse it down to its center of mass, and then you would worry about how it travels just by worrying about how the center of mass travels, assuming the rest of it is static. Third interpretation, well, if you take mass, think of that as being money, and think of distance as turning into time, this becomes a useful idea to have around in finance. Okay, let's do one more example. For this example, I'm going to have a system of point masses, and we're going to want to know, will it balance? So our units here are going to be the same as before. We'll have masses given in kilograms, distances given in meters. And when I ask about a balancing, we're assuming we have the force of gravity coming down from the top. So will it balance? And if not, where should I put the fulcrum so that it does balance? To find out if it balances or not, we just compute the moment about the origin. Okay, we put our numbers in. We see that on the left-hand side, we're going to get a moment of minus 400 kilogram meters. And then on the right side, we're going to have 500 kilogram meters. So when I add these together, I get 100 kilogram meters. And we note this is not equal to zero, so this system isn't balanced. When gravity acts on this, it's going to tilt to one direction or the other. To figure out that direction, we just look and see which side has the greater moment. That's going to be the right-hand side, forgetting about the minus sign. So this system is going to tilt to the right. How do we fix that? Well, the answer to that is the center of mass. So let's take a look. If I take our definition, the moment about the origin is 100 kilogram meters. I'm going to sum up all the masses that we have. So that's going to be 30, 20, and 50. That gives me 100 kilograms. We notice that the units cancel to leave me with meters, so I know I did something right because the units are coming out as a distance. And so our center of mass is going to be at one meter. So if I want this system to balance, I slide the fulcrum over to one. Now, even though we didn't define the moment about other points, we could still check our answer by going back to first principles. So let's compute the moment about one. Well, what's this going to be? We go back to our original definition. The moment of a point about a point P is just the distance to P times the mass. So for my mass 30, the distance to our new point 1 is going to be 11. So I put it in. Since I'm on the left, it picks up a minus sign. The distance for our 20 kilogram point from 1, we're going from minus 5 to 1. So that's a 6. Picks up a minus sign because it's on the left. And then for our 50 kilogram point, we notice we're losing distance. So 10 to 1 gives me a 9. And then we notice when I compute the moment about 1, we're going to get a 0, which means this is going to be balanced. 